Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to episode 3 of Pubcast. I am your host, BC Canada, aka him. I stream games, make top 10s, record Pubcasts, and play miners for Tears for Sphere or Spheres. What's up? I'm Thunder, captain of the Whitecaps and NLTP. And joining us first on the desk today is our wonderful desk guest, D-Star here. D-Star, go ahead and introduce yourself for us. Uh, hi, I'm D-Star. I'm the, uh, one of the five CRC members for MLTP this season, and uh, I'm a majors player for Boost and Dynamo. Not bad, not bad. Joining us last minute on the show today is our good friend Catalyst. Catalyst, for those who don't know, give him a little rundown of who you are. Hey, I'm Catalyst, also known as Cat by people that play with me, although not the Cat from back in like 2014. Uh, I'm a MLTP captain for Degrees of Freedom. I started captaining the team in Season 11, and I play Miners Defense. Nice, nice, nice. Glad to have you on. So, this week's episode, we are going to be going over some new rules for the season of MLTP, we have overtime rules, we have playoff structure, we have the pick and ban rules for the maps, and we might even have time to go into a little bit of rank pug fiascos, if I do say so myself, involving BDL and the gang. But first things first, let's start it off with ties and overtimes. I want to start with Fender here because I know Fender just can't get enough of talking about these wonderful new overtimes. Well, okay, let's see. So MLCP got rid of ties and implemented the whole three two one zero point system that NLTP has been doing not since last season. Um, and I just, I think it's completely unnecessary. I don't see anything wrong with ties. Obviously, I mean, I'm like in the vast minority with that, and I just it's it's so unnecessary in a multiple week league season when like you don't need a winner every week. The winners decide at the end of the season who gets playoffs and who doesn't. I don't, I don't know. Do you guys got the anything only, to add to that? The only counter argument I've ever heard is people saying, like, I don't like ties essentially. I think one of the main things that a lot of people like about it is that it gets rid of the disappearing point that we had, which, I mean, obviously there are ways to get around with that while still having ties, but uh, MLTP used to have three points for a win and uh, one point for a tie, and uh, you would have this weird disappearing point every week if there was a tie. So this, this fixes that. Um, one suggested change was just to make a win worth two and then a tie worth one, and then you get rid of the disappearing point. Um, but I also like the, the overtime system because uh, we do have, from time to time, teams that are tied at the end of the season in terms of points, and it'll come down to you know other strange tie-breaking things. And I think the, the more we can avoid tie-breakers and stick to just raw points that each team has occurred or has uh, accumulated, the better. Um, and I think that overtime system grants like a little bit more finite uh, changes in terms of points, so you're less likely to have teams that are tying in points at the end of the season. Uh, sorry, what are you saying? No, no, go ahead. Uh, so I, I don't really know if I, like, like, I get the whole disappearing point thing. Uh, I mean, in my opinion, if the two teams tie, then, like, no one deserves the extra point, right? They just tied, so they're equally balanced, so they each deserve a point, and... I don't know. I guess I don't have a super front arguing against that. Fair enough, but I don't know. I think just the three one zero point system makes it makes sense. If they tie, they get this one point each. No one deserved the third point. And I don't know about the whole tiebreaker at the end of the season. I've never really understood that because, like, I don't think it really. I mean, I guess it happens maybe once a season, once every two seasons. But I don't. I'm not terribly sure, um, but like, I think you're gonna have tiebreakers no matter what point system you use, and like, I don't really see the 
problem with going to tiebreakers, such as like head to head or captive or whatever, or even like caps four. Um, I don't, I've never seen a problem with it, but everyone seems to make it a big deal or something. I don't know. Yeah, that's fair. So, as players in Major League Tag Pro, Catalyst, I don't know if you've experienced an overtime yet, have you? Uh, I sort of have. Uh, this past this season right now, in uh, week one versus meme team, our minors team went to overtime in game two. Um, I played the first half, game two, half one, but then I swapped out and let my other t- teammates play in half two and also in the overtime period. And we actually played 20 minutes overtime, so two overtime periods. So it was quite a battle. Uh, the first half was we lost 6 2, but then we made it come back in half two when I took myself out uh, <laughs> to tie back up at 8 8 or something like that. Um, so it's quite a battle to get there. And then I, I enjoyed the extra 20 minute back and forth. Um, I know. You enjoyed it, huh? Yeah, I, I enjoyed watching it at least. It was entertaining, right? Yeah, on that note, uh, I, that brings up another good point. Something that uh, us at the CRC, or at least me and uh, Sebastian, I don't know if I should speak for anyone else I haven't really talked about with him, is uh, we've, we've been trying to focus a lot on uh, streaming this season. Uh, we've started like a group me to coordinate streamers and we're starting to like uh try and find ways to like incentivize streaming games so we've got that spicy new twitch flare on the subreddit we kind of have flares on the mltc subreddit for uh streamers and uh we're we're really trying to like um make the viewer experience a lot better uh this season so i think over time you know is a lot more exciting for viewers during the regular season. So let me speak on thing. that as a viewer and now a streamer is that ties are pretty damn boring if you're watching the game. That was like my only argument against ties was that like if you're watching a game, you don't want to see it end in a tie that just like leaves a stale taste in your mouth. Like I didn't come on, I didn't go online, tune into this guy's stream, and the game's just gonna end. Like what if the tie both have? That's gonna be the most boring stuff to watch. Like I come on to get hyped up and. Watch some damn good tag pro, but I don't know. What I'll say to that, I mean, you can still have good damn tag pro even if they do tie. Like, yeah, but then it's just, it's just like at the end of the day, like, wh- why do they even watch? It's like nothing happened. Yeah, that's just a very unsatisfying finish. Just, I mean, I can understand that, but I mean, it's, it's, it's how the, that's how the season works, right? They play, they're evenly matched, they tie, and the season moves on. They each get a point at the end of the day, so. But, I mean, I guess I do understand the whole uh, entertainment factor and wanting overtime. Yeah, like, I guess we just gotta, you just gotta take into consideration if you want MLTP to possibly grow to a broader fan base, then overtimes is something that draws people, like, it'll, like, kind of attract people because it's, like, a little bit more hype. A suggestion I have heard is changing the rules of overtime so that it's like pub rules, like first to three caps, or the time runs out, and whoever's like ahead of the time, which is normally, but adding a three cap, kind of, first to three caps in there. I don't know if you've heard that, D-Star. Anyone suggested that? I actually haven't heard that idea. That's kind of interesting. Uh, I can tell you, I, I'm going to assume this is okay, and I hope that the other series, you don't like roast me over like leaking, but um, we are rolling out some changes pretty soon to the overtime system, to the format. Um, assuming we're getting captain's feedback right now, I'm sure, and Catalyst sent this to me and asked about like the status with this and everything, so I'm sure he has some thoughts on it too. But we're changing um, the overtime system to allow for a captain's agreement at any point during overtime to do a golden cap. So if you at any point, you know, like say Catalyst said he enjoyed 20 minute overtime. So, but uh, say for example, you know, there's two captains that really don't want to play overtime. They're like. I don't want to spend any more time playing tag for today. You know, I've been on here for like two hours. Um, I'm kind of bored of this. Let's just switch to gold cap, and they want to just like get it over with. Um, if both captains agree to to a golden cap, then uh, we at the CRC are like go for it. You know, it'll expedite the game. It's not necessarily as fair in some scenarios. You can get kind of uh, unfairly punished by some like unlucky pup spawns or something, and that might cost you the game. But it's as long as both captains accept the risk going into it. Um, we think it's better in the interest of time. If that's what the captains want. Do they have to start like over or is it like mid game? 
No, no, it's before each okay. overtime okay. period. Right. Okay. So they could play like the first half of the first like overtime, and then just normally, and it's a tie, or it doesn't even matter what it is, and then they could just play the next half golden cap. Well, you, or does that you have to be before to, the game? A, 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 a overtime period is two five minute halves, so you can't okay. you can't switch to a golden cap after a half. You have to do a full period. So you could do a golden cap before any periods. You could say, "I just want to do golden cap. Let's just settle this right now in a twenty minute golden cap." Or you could play one 10 minute period and be like, oh gosh, another 10 minute. Because you've already tied the game at that point if you're in overtime. So if you play another 10 minutes and you're still tied, it's like, oh, this is taking forever. Let's just switch to Golden Cap. You can do that. Um, so it really just gives a lot of freedom to the captains. You know, whenever you want to pull the trigger and switch to Golden Cap, once if you once you've decided this is taking too long, then you can do that. And the flexibility helps for like when you do interconference games and then we have to split servers. Like depending on the server, if it's the central radius matchup, I'm sure. Golden Cap is probably not going to be on the table. It would be hard to figure out which server to do it on. Um, so I'm sure we'd still keep to the regular 10 minute periods. All right. Yeah. Wait, that, that is true. Wait, aren't yeah. most overtimes played in two halves though? Like two f five minute halves? I've never seen an overtime with like now, 10 yeah. minutes. They're, they're 10 minutes for a total overtime with five minute halves, correct? Yeah, yeah so like whatever team's winning after 10 minute increments. I think there is room for a captain's agreement to, if you're on the same, like if you're both radius teams or something, you can agree to yeah. just do a 10 minute period, but I think yeah. most teams... We had that offer with meme team in week one, but we stuck, they wanted to do it in one 10 minute period. I wanted to keep it in the two five minute halves because I felt it helped us because we were definitely the underdogs in that matchup. Um, coming back after half one, we wanted to keep our small momentum building up in five minute halves if we lost one of the five minute halves we could always try to come back in the next half. Yeah, that's yeah. a good point. Fights for a nice like reset. And if you're like one of those people that thinks that like certain colors have advantage on certain maps. I don't know. Hmm. Better dead than red. <laughs> you know, they've, they've done studies on like uh sports teams that have red as their like school colors and stuff and they perform better like yeah is it supposed to like invoke fear in people i don't know what it or is something? but it's, apparently it's like a real thing i don't know what the like psychological reasoning is behind it or something but apparently like red is a good color what the for sports teams at least hmm okay there all right um Let's move. Let's move into the. Let's move into the pick ban system next. So, pretty much. Correct me if I'm wrong, but the new rules are that the pick and ban system, the pick and bans for the maps goes down 15 minutes before the game, mm -hmm. and it's on stream, right? Correct. Correct. Okay. So that is super fucking cool for all the viewers and the streamer that is like so cool for them that's that's how i've always wanted it like it i don't know that just seems so hyped to me but a lot of players really hate this thing because they don't want to practice every map for playoffs they want to practice the maps that they know they're going to play on right and i have also heard that people could just do the pick and ban on their own and just promise each other that they're going to do the exact same thing when they're on stream and that's not through. Yeah, that's something I, I saw that in the third as well. But um, the one thing I, I think that most of the CRC would stand by is that none, the CRC is not going to step in. Like, we're not going to hold any agreements outside of that 15 minute before period. Like, those aren't binding. So, if someone like backstabs you and someone pulls a wild card and picks a different map than you agreed to before, we're not going to be like, we're not going to change that for you. <laughs> so. You know, trust, that would actually trust, be pretty hype. Trust the other captain at your own risk if you want to try and pull that strategy, I, I would say. Cattles as a captain, how do you feel about doing the pick and bans just 15 minutes before? Uh, I like it. I was one of the people that, I think I was one of the first to support it in the captain subreddit. I, I watch CSGO, Counter-Strike, and yeah, you know, yeah, me all too. the tournaments. Yeah. Every, every match is decided right beforehand. Um, it's, it's awesome because it, it gives it also a good chance for commentators, the streamers, to actually like get some analysis going about which teams are picking which maps and why, and like how it plays the different strengths of the team. So I think that would be helpful for like new players and new competitive players to 
actually understand how maps play differently and uh, why certain teams are better at maps than other teams. Uh, yeah, I like it. Yeah. I think it'd be interesting to see like teams that have like much stronger like defensive pairings, like seeing you know like how certain maps are more defensive or offensive, and you can see like strong favors towards certain maps based on that and other things. And uh, one thing I really like is just the strategy that comes out of it, like for things such as that, but also for like just personal preference. Like as a captain, you have to plan for a lot more with this system in place now. Like you can't you have just to do your homework. You have yeah, to watch exactly. the team. And you, yeah, have, and you can, screens. like, look at the other team and see what maps, you know, you think they're going to pick. There's a lot of, like, mind gaming going on to it, too. And it's like, do you, and you can, like, uh, I was joking about this with uh, some people in the uh, NLTP group meme, but, uh, like, you could have, like, spy networks. You have, you, like, send someone to watch the other team's scrims, like, sneak into the group and, like, see what maps they're scrimming on and be like, okay, they're, like playing this map a lot i think they're gonna try and pick this map and you like just ban that one out or something i don't know like yeah also yeah. last season the pick bans weren't necessarily public so nope. teams didn't have to reveal what they were picking banning in the previous rounds of the playoffs right so when i got to the second round of the playoffs i wanted to know who we were facing what they picked and banned last round um so i actually had to try to find that out sneakily but i don't think it worked out that well but it will force teams to actually pay attention now yeah. It's going to be a lot easier for scrims also during that time. I yeah. remember, like, so many teams just, like, they only want to play certain maps. So, like, okay, fine, we'll play, like, one game on your map. You have to play one game on our map after. But now they have, like, every single map to practice, really, if they want yeah. to be prepared. Yeah. Basically, you have, assuming you know which map you want to ban at the very beginning, you you have a remaining six-map pool that you need to practice and be prepared to play on. And you, and you can probably pick, like, three of those out of the hat and say these are the three that are most likely to be picked by the other team, like if you actually watch how they play and what their best maps were. Yeah. I mean, there there's probably, like, I imagine Cedar will be banned by a few teams. Or, <laughs> I mean, uh, it, there are quite a few blowouts this past week on Cedar, so I think some team, I, I can only speak for Boostin, but we, we aren't very excited to play Cedar again. <laughs> um I think like the other maps are pretty standard this season. Actually, there's not like uh, there's not the two new map rules. So, but I I, th I think everyone's pretty well versed with the current map pool, which I think lends itself to this system as well. It's like there's no besides Sea, there's no real like wild card maps coming out at, at any of the teams. Just uh, remind me, what was the community map vote again? Scorpio, right? Which has been in for three seasons now, I think. So. Mm -hmm. People should definitely know what they're doing on that map by now. Exactly. Huh. I thought uh, I thought they were gonna vote in a different map. Honestly, it's pretty close. Wormy was two votes behind. Two so, votes, holy. Yeah. So anyone could have decided that, really. Um. But I mean, either way, those are both super well-known maps. So. Yeah. Yeah. The. A lot of people uh, have criticized it that because they think that uh, the the map pool is getting like stagnant. But I kind of like I'm fine with just playing like the same maps over and over again. I don't know. I I, th I think that's like a really personal preference type thing. But like I'm okay with just playing like six really good maps. That almost start. yeah. That almost goes back to CS:GO a bit too. Right. Exactly. That, that's what I'm thinking of. Is like yeah. CS:GO. Like they play the same maps all the time. It it, it like. There's different strategy for all of them, but when you're changing like a new map every single season, like that almost seems too much. Like I think if there's a a new map that's worth being in, it'll make its way in on its own. You know? Yes. Yeah. Yeah, we've seen maps like hmm, market maybe. Yeah, it's yeah. been pretty divisive. Just like but people it forced get... it in, and it kind of got shit on it in LTP, but. Did they make it in an NLTP? Yep. Wow, Last season even... it did. I didn't even realize that. I don't think it made it this season. No, it did not, because people were, pr uh, yeah, they were sick of it pretty quick. There are, are the few teams that do great on it. I think it's the same with maps like Thinking with Portals. There are some teams that just, like, they love the map. They can beat every team on it.
but the majority of the teams don't like it whatsoever because it's like a completely different game. It's like it. Yeah. I wonder what the newest, like, standard map is. Like, out of the six maps in MLTB besides Cedar, I guess. Like, what the newest one of those is. Be, like, interesting to look at. I imagine most of them are probably over a year old by now. I think they're all pretty old, yeah. How how new is Cedar? That was Flux. This is his first season of Cedar. Oh, it's first season competitive, but it's probably a pretty old map, I have to say. Like, I didn't feel that old. Cedar did... was added to rotation five months ago. So, yeah. It's relatively new compared to the other one. Yeah, yeah. Definitely new compared to the other ones, but. Uh, you know, it takes time for these maps to like work their way into rotation from. Like, you have. I think a lot of uh, the tournaments have, have so much to do with this. Yes. People love the, the poet. Type pro tournament of champion stuff, and he, he actually has like a surprising amount of influence over like mm -hmm. what maps people are interested in playing in competitive. Well, people are always wanting like map makers at least. They're always wanting their maps to get played in one of his tournaments because that's like that's the biggest like testing you're ever gonna get done in a map is through his tournaments. Yeah, you have an insane amount of players playing like at least two games each on it. It's crazy. A lot of feedback. Yep, and that's like, I'm pretty sure that's how Market got into it, is that he played it in one of the tournaments, and then people are like, holy shit, this map's so good. Because it's <laughs> the first time playing it, and then they started uh, playing it more, and it got really bad, really quick. But, yeah. Uh, Market's, yeah, I think that's what you're saying is pretty accurate about Market. Like, it's fun... I I thought like when I played that map the first time I thought holy shit this is the best map I've ever played in Tag Pro <laughs> I've never had this much fun I was kind of getting sick of Tag Pro this is so much fun this is a completely different game and by like the end of the first week playing it NLTP I hated it and I wish we never put it in. <laughs> <laughs> One of my funnest times in Tag Pro is changing the settings on the map be like ten percent acceleration but like three hundred percent top speed. <laughs> so it's like everyone's going super slow until you hit one of the many boosts on the map and then you just bounce off 10 corners all the way across the map. <laughs> Classic market. Anyways, enough about the maps. Let's get into the juicy stuff here. Uh, playoff format. <laughs> so, playoff format. Playoff format. CRC came out with a big oofer decision. Oofer. <laughs> I mean, okay, it uh, it it kind of makes a little sense. The ones I got it explained to me, the hybrid double elimination playoff thingy majiggy. So, pretty much four teams make playoffs in each conference. The first round is first seed versus second seed, third seed versus fourth seed. The loser of the one seed and the one versus two plays the winner of the three versus four. The winner of that match goes on to play the winner of the original one versus two match. That is for the conference championship. And then the two conference champions meet in the Super Bowl. Pretty much, right? That's correct. Okay. What do you link here? Is this a picture of it? It's a picture yeah, of it. Okay. Picture of it. Okay. I'm, yeah, okay. I think I'm, I'm pretty. I'm kind of impressed that I got it down. <laughs> so, uh, let's start with D Star. What do you got to defend this? <laughs> so, I posted a, a huge post in the thread that got like I think it was sitting at like negative two last time I checked out on it. Well, that's not the, bad. That's not bad the, at all. But the format itself, the post for the format was at like negative thirty or some shit. So <laughs> <laughs> people, people were really. I, I was actually really surprised by how how negative the reaction was for this um because one thing that i heard a lot of and and some of the other crc agreed that they heard a lot of was that the there wasn't enough reward for coming in first or second seed or, or in first seed especially right people like, want the season to matter right right yeah that's that's like the the quote that regular season doesn't matter regular season you can just like coast through like we've heard we've heard a lot of people say that um and I just I, I, to to paint a picture for you guys. I don't if you guys have ever been on a team and and for all the viewers as well. Just imagine 
if you've ever been on a, a team in a competitive season where you're just like stomping like really early on and you clinch playoffs like really early on like you you've just been like almost undefeated like almost the entire time um you can pretty much do like whatever the fuck you want for like that last few weeks and it doesn't matter like it once you once you like get far enough ahead in the system that you like can't like once you clinch there's nothing else to work for really um you might argue that your placement and the single elimination is pretty important because if you like drop to like a two seed now you're playing the three seed instead of the four seed and if you drop to like the four seed instead of the three seed now you're playing the number one seed and number instead of the number two seed but i mean like that's that's all of that is based on the like the assumption that your seeding is representative of your skill within your conference which isn't necessarily true and um it's even more so the case when uh certain players are only eligible for playoffs we saw last season lebron if if boats and holds hadn't completely collapsed and okay then hadn't been banned uh in week two or whatever like uh we they would have had lebron james on their team for playoffs which would and now there's another team that has hark who's banned until playoffs and Hark had insane stats last season, so we'll see if if he's like a monster in playoffs all of a sudden. Like it's just weird this discrepancy between a regular season team and a playoff team. You know, it's the same team, but suddenly the dynamic has changed. And and I think that a large problem is that um, your regular season like stand your seating isn't necessarily representative of like the best team. And and in season ten, okay, then's team actually like threw a game in the last week of the season to change their, to try and change their seating. Yeah, I remember so that. So they could avoid playing another team that they thought was, was, uh, was better. It was a mean team, I think. Um, uh, so like, if teams are throwing games in, in your regular season, there's a problem. So I'll, I'll leave it at that for now. But there, there are a few reasons that a change needed to be implemented. Whether this is the right change or not is up for debate, but I do not, I'm not a huge fan of the single elimination bracket. Okay, and it's not like you guys just like made this system up. I'm pretty sure that you used uh, the International, yes, which correct. I watch, is, which is pretty much like the Dota, Dota 2 like, World Finals. They use, this, uh, they use the same format. Yep, correct. And seems to work for them, so I guess why not make it work for Tag Pro? Uh, yeah. Catalyst, were you. F- what are you feeling with this style of playoff? Alright, so I was one of the few captains that spoke up against it, uh, or at least trying to change it into something different. Um, but first, th- there's a lot of questions to ask, like, why we're changing it. Like, do we want. The le- so when you have to consider the whole league, the CRC, the captains, the players, and the viewers, what do they want from the playoffs? Do they want to see every single minute of every match, so you have to schedule it so that everyone can see every single match? Or do you want to have a lot of importance placed on the regular season, uh, which is a common uh, suggestion or requirement for the top players and the top teams? So they want high seating as a, as a reward. And... Or do you want a system where you have a lot of upsets or comebacks, where you have double elimination? You got knocked down one week, but you can come back and end up winning Super Bowl. Um, I, I suggested a full double, double elimination bracket, so everyone has two chances in the playoffs. And it would still fit within the same four-week structure. But it would get a little hectic with scheduling, um, which was the, the one con. I think Beastar was the one that pointed out. Um, streaming would be difficult because you basically have three matches or six matches the first week being streamed um, so it would be kind of crazy, kind of busy but every team would have two chances. The issue with the current or the originally proposed CRC method was that in the conference finals you could have a team be undefeated up to that point and then lose to the team they beat in the first round and be out of the playoffs completely and just it, it feels unfair because you're basically splitting the series one to one just depends on which week you won the suit you won the match in right um so i wasn't a fan of just having this the single elimination in that final conference finals week i don't know it, it really just depends on what the crc and the captains want for the league 
and that requires knowing what the players and the viewers want. All right, so you said that it would be like difficult to stream it, um, yeah, to, so here, to stream all a, the games. Here's an image of what I proposed with a full double elimination. All right, so what do we got here? Run me through this. Yeah, so on the first week, you have the usual seeding, one versus four, two versus three. So you play those four matches in the East and the West. And then the losers of those games immediately play another series that night. So that same Sunday or Monday, they go immediately to a new match. The loser of that match is eliminated from playoffs completely. So it puts a ton of pressure on these teams to perform. After playing an hour of playoffs, they have 30 minutes or whatever to take a break, recuperate, and then come do a pick ban and play an elimination match. So you would have elimination matches each week immediately following the regular scheduled ones. Okay, okay. That would that sounds pretty cool. But yeah, that is a lot of tag like bro. It's, yeah, it's a lot of tag bro. And you have to yeah. really free up your schedule for that. The games would have to start pretty damn early too for that to happen. Yeah, like I would envision this being like if tag bro ever reached the point where you're getting paid to play basically. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like that I could probably like I'm sure we could figure that out for streaming. Like we're we're pretty damn free on Sundays, like most of us who do it. Yeah, we've but... managed to stream uh, six games a week, two weeks in a row now for majors. I think we've gotten all minors too, haven't we? I'm, yeah, I'm pretty sure we have all minors games too. So I so. think this is possible, but I don't know if players are going to be huge fans of playing that much tag pro. Like most players seem sick of tag pro after they play like a game for an hour, but right. And also, the viewers wouldn't be able to watch every single one of those games. Yeah, that's that is the other problem. If we could have it, like, if we could have the two, if we could have them play on two different days, if we just had like as many days as we wanted, because Tag Bro is a professional esport, then it would might work. Or we started one in like the morning, the other one in the evening, or, like afternoon, and then played the right made the losers play in the evening. Like that would work as well. Yeah. Um. Another thing, though, that um, I think this I haven't I take issue with is the, that uh, it doesn't since both every single team is put on the same playing field just like before, so it kind of doesn't solve the uh, the problem that one and two seeds don't really get that much of an advantage coming out of the regular season. They're right. still kind of put on a relatively similar playing field as the four and three seeds, where their only advantage is the. It, it, is the is uh is based on the assumption that regular season seating is representative of your actual team skill. All right. Yeah. So I'm of the school of thought that we shouldn't reward one and two as much as the original CRC plan. Like I'm okay with the, just the regular one, four, two, three matchups. Um, I feel the regular season you use it as a tool to learn your best rosters, your best strategies, try things out. Like if you're blowing everyone out of the water like take the time to try risky things um try different lineups so that you're ready 100 percent in the playoffs okay so you're thinking that the regular season is just like a prep for playoffs more so than like you're battling for a right to enter playoffs i mean it, it is still a battle but with eight of 12 teams making the play playoffs you should still be it's not as significant as back in like season six or season seven when we had like 24 teams or whatever that was but um yeah it's not as important so if what you're saying is that when you're like during the season you're focused on getting to the super bowl and winning the super bowl but like more d stars saying is that your goal first off is to make playoffs with the highest seed that you can and once you get there then you can change your goal to winning the super bowl is right. what i'm getting from this yeah that sounds about right it's. It seems like Catalyst. You're saying that you should be focusing on the Super Bowl from the get go, and I'm saying you don't think about the Super Bowl until you're in playoffs and and with the highest seating that you can achieve. Right. You're so like you think that there are more important things to worry about. Like the rep. I think of the regular season as a as a pretty separate entity, um, which and in, which should influence playoffs significantly. But your game plan in playoffs can change dramatically, like I mentioned for a few reasons. Yeah. Like, so I, I do like the 
the comment you made though about like uh if you're a team like that is like doing extremely well you should use that as a time to experiment with new things that you might want to try out during playoffs and if you find like a better solution i, I think that kind of like lends itself to the to the single elimination bracket like you should like your your advantage in the regular season you can use that to to have more like freedom to try different strategies than other captains but i feel like if you're a losing captain you're gonna take the same approach anyways right like yeah because doing done... what's normal is not working obviously so. right exactly so it's like if you're saying like whether you win or you lose like you should be experimenting is like yeah, you should be learning stuff in the regular season like i treat each game as as important as the rest of the games like each game is important to getting to playoffs Right. Like now, hmm. I think, like a lot of people, you were saying that people um, liked. Do you do you do you think people liked the the playoff system more when when it was more competitive to get in playoffs, like when it was fifty percent of the team instead of seventy five or whatever or sixty six percent as it is now? Because I I kind of think people enjoyed that that a tougher uh, spot to make playoffs. I more. mean, to be honest, I was on the lower half of the league in terms of team rankings for most of those seasons so it was kind of frustrating to know with like two or three weeks to go that you really have very slim chance of making playoffs whereas in this system if you're in fifth or sixth place you have a shot up until the very last week of the season usually so you like that there's like you know keep the dream alive kind of thing going on yeah. for those lower teams yeah i can see i can see that being a benefit especially good stuff if you have two of the lower teams playing each other with uh, are you talking about if there's just like six teams that go into the playoffs? Yeah, yeah, that would be the proposed. Yeah, I mean, if we were talking fifty percent of the teams, that would would it be. Um, there were there were some proposed three team playoffs, but um, I think the most common one had the first the first seed and going directly to the conference finals. Yeah, just which, getting a buy, right? Right, which I didn't really like. It's Maybe already I, like the playoffs are already so small. Mm-hmm. Like if you put a buy in there, just like. There's barely any playoffs. I think that's yeah. what they did with ELTP this uh, the past season. Six out of the eight for everyone. And the first uh, seed, first two seeds, I think, got buys. And I know Boost and Dynamo got kind of screwed over because they hadn't played in like two weeks or something. Because they also had a break for the like their Europa tournament or whatever. So. They hadn't played for like two weeks, and then they lost. There's a couple other ways that you can incentivize getting a higher seed. So like you can give the higher seeds, the one and two seeds, an advantage in the pick ban phase. Yeah. Um, right, because there was a whole discussion. Uh, I was, <laughs> I spent a lot of time for changing the system and proposing changes so that was balanced basically between each of the seeds in each matchup. But you can sort of change it to be lopsided towards one seed in the pick ban phase as a reward for doing well in the regular season. Or you can give them like a, a one map advantage even if you do like in a best of three series it doesn't work that well. But if it's like a best of five series, give the higher seed a, a one map advantage to start with. Um to give them a reward for the regular season. Yeah, I think um I'll go ahead and say that uh that is a very strong possibility. Um the CRC is looking at switching back to the original uh, single elimination style af- after the large uh, public opinion seemed to be that they didn't that the new system was too radically different and was people didn't seem to appreciate uh, the sort of second chance system for a proceeds. So um, I wouldn't be surprised to see the old system come back and. If it does, I wouldn't be surprised for us to implement something like that with the pick ban being moved back towards. Because we, we did change it in the new rules to be more even. Um, but if we, we go back to single elim, and, uh, single elim then uh, in the interest of uh, giving an advantage to one and two seeds, we might change it back to a more uh, one team favored pick ban. I think that would make the most sense, honestly. Yeah. I mean, that just brings us back to the question of, do you want to see competitive games? Do you want to give the underdog a big shot at getting the upset? Yeah. I mean, as a viewer, I want to see that, but... 
Yeah, everyone likes an upset as a viewer, but from the point of view of the upper seeds, it's not as uh, nice. <laughs> You're like, we did really well this season, and now we're going to lose to some fourth seed that barely made it in, but all of a sudden is going to try twice as hard in playoffs than they did in the regular season. Like, why aren't they getting punished for doing really poorly in the regular season? Yeah, the, who did that happen to last season? I think it was Holy, Holy Rollers. Rollers. Yeah. yeah. Who, like, they were pretty grim at the, for the beginning half, at least beginning half of the season. But then they made a playoff run at the end. Maybe they somehow snuck in, but they lost out to uh, the Balls of Rage or something. Yeah, yeah they lost the eventual major. winners. My team also had that happen in majors. We were the underdog in the first round. Won in two games, surprisingly, and then ended up losing the next round to the Balls and Parade, so... I'm not sure what changed exactly on our team, but... <laughs> <laughs> Some people are just uh, better in playoffs or worse in playoffs for some reason or another. It's a much more, like, the stakes are much higher, so the pressure can get to some people. And it only goes up as you go further into the playoffs. So, like, I mean, you can see certain players just, like, completely choke in the Super Bowl. Especially if it's the first time. Like, we see a lot of people who make multiple Super Super Bowl appearances and... Pretty sure there's a reason for that. They do just like hella clutch in playoffs constantly. Yeah. I think consistency plays a large role in it too. Like a lot of people don't consider the fact that like if you're a good player but you're inconsistent, like sometimes you're like one of the best players in the entire game, but other times you're like like I think the there are certain play styles where this happens a lot. Um I want to say players like Abe, who are like super risky. Like, if you can consistently pull off those risky plays and and make something happen, then you, you'd be like amazing. And and Abe has been amazing in the past because he has been able to consistently pull this stuff off. But if you start to falter at all and like make like big misplays, like you you your team will suffer. Like Abe got an upstepped in a game this this last Sunday, and we ended up winning that game by one cap i'm pretty sure so uh consistency is pretty important and it only gets more important as you go into playoffs because those errors i think Ty, I, can, I think i can say pretty confidently Ty pro is a game of errors like the team that makes the the makes less errors is almost always going to come out on top yeah i feel like the game is i probably am completely wrong but i feel like the game is close to being solved like not i don't know solved is the right word but like i don't know how much better people can get than they are right now with how the game is like the elements that are in the game i think mechanics wise there's a lot of room for improvement but as far as like the meta goes we haven't seen much change in the past like i want to say like four like four to six seasons yeah, I mean, the biggest thing recently is anti re coming into play. Yeah. But, um, I mean, it's not even that recent, though. It's been, like, a good season of that before. It... Yeah. Um, I don't know. I think it's just a matter of... I think it, it'll probably end up coming down to the maps that are played uh, and, like, introducing new elements and maps and just kind of the meta revolves around that, so... Yeah. And that's another thing that... um lends the argument of trying new maps and MLTP is, you know, when you try new maps, you're you're trying new metas at the same time, which is that's something that's pretty cool. That's yeah. A, yeah, like, I don't know if any of you play League, but, like, they update everything, like, they update a lot in League about, like, I want to say every few weeks, and the meta just completely changes. So in the pro scene... You have teams that they dominate on a certain meta. Like, this would be really interesting if we did this in Tag Pro, but I don't know how we do it. Like, just with completely different maps, I guess. Yeah, but they just, like... different set of seven maps. Yeah, well, I mean, not like... Like, maybe, like, the first two weeks, there's, like, 
whatever maps the next two weeks there's like gravity well maps the next two weeks there's like portal maps like it <laughs> like just like doing something crazy but like it like changes quite a bit and there's teams that will like they look like the best team in the world and then they go and they like are like bottom tier the next patch because they just can't adapt to the meta i'm gonna start the first mltp team that specializes in gravity well maps <laughs> <laughs> yeah uh... I don't know, I think, I, I do like the idea of us trying new things with maps. Like, I do think gravity maps, like, should be allowed, especially if there's, like, a good one and for a shout. But, but uh, that's the thing I about describe, like, define a good one, because people always I mean, say we need a good yeah, one in rotation, yeah, and... But, I mean... I don't know. Horizon for Season 13. Hmm. I don't know. <laughs> But yeah, like, I don't know. Like, OOTP always has that tradition of trying weird maps. Like, uh, I mean, this past season, they had Star and Giacuala, and they tried out Vagabond and uh, Aeroden. And then, like, some, like, Iron Smirk, all that. But, I mean, they, they have, like, four maps, four new maps that haven't been played in a while, or have never been played over, like, over ten maps. And... I, th- I like that they try new things, but it keeps the season more fresh and just like provides like new strategies to be played and all that. Yeah, you could see that being an advantage of trying new things. Is it's it's always something new for sure, but I don't. I wouldn't necessarily equate new to better. That's fair. That's yeah. It's, it's, it's a matter of finding a balance. I think. Did any of you guys try the uh, tag pro next? Uh, preview when it came out like a year or two ago. I think I did. Nope. Yeah. yeah. I think I was in a game. So something interesting that they changed other than like normalized movement and all that other stuff, but the way that scoring worked is a win occurred whenever a team was up by three points. So it was, you had to win by three. So it could last a long time, but it allows you to like give up caps, like willingly sacrifice a cap to get better resets basically, because you know, oh, we're up two right now, we'll just give up a cap, but we'll make up that cap later by getting a hard reset, things like that. And it would also make things interesting in the case of, like, overtime or LTP games, you'd be playing for indefinite amount of time until one team's up by plus three. I don't know what you guys think about that. That's something I thought of when the overtime system was getting implemented, is, like, um, like, there could this be this meta that arises of outlasting your opponent where you're not even, like, playing to win, really. You're just playing to, like, make sure that you don't lose. <laughs> See so who falls keep, asleep first. You keep, you keep tying repeatedly and because you know that your, like, schedule is safer than your opponent's. So, like, some, some person on the enemy team has to, like, go to bed soon or something. So you just, like, stall it out. <laughs> like, I, you, I have you'd actually need happening. a deep roster. It'd, like, it'd be, like, <laughs> baseball. Like, you have a big bullpen of players to pull in. <laughs> Warming them up in like a separate like map test lobby, like <laughs> boosting around on the map and the and the what is it called the the pen pitcher's pen or something? I yeah, forget. The bullpen. It. Yeah, the bullpen. There. Yeah. <laughs> Shows how much I love baseball. Um, <sighs> yeah, I saw. I, I thought that I'm like thinking of like these random scenarios of like. That's actually genius. Holy. Abuse, abuse the system. Now that I've said that, someone's gonna try it now. So. <laughs> My my bad, whoever's the, the victim. <laughs> Whoever is the people with bedtimes. Yeah. That would be I'm super sure, interesting. I'm sure TLTP will implement it. <laughs> okay. I think we got a little off topic. <laughs> yeah, I forget what we were talking about. Um, playoffs. Playoffs. I'm pretty sure we covered everything in playoffs. We got all the... We got all the... All sorts of double elimination goodness going on there. Uh, we got the six-team single elimination in there. And then we got the good old season 11 rule in there as well. Which, I mean, yeah, yeah, okay. We even yeah. got Catalyst system on there. We even got Catalyst Surprise system on there, and... yeah. Catalyst getting some screen time, too. <clears throat> Someone told me that they don't understand why the CRC put time into doing all this shit for the playoff system when they said that there's like so many things that could be better done in MLTP, but then they focused on something that 
no one thought was broken before this. I mean, I I don't know. I guess I just heard a, a vocal minority coming out of season eleven because like most people probably know this about me, but I'm like uh, I hang out with a lot of people on Boat LTP, which is like this group of like more toxic but keyboard warriors yeah yeah more toxic but uh generally i would say generally better at the game than most other like clicks in tag pro they got no life yeah yeah they're a bunch of nerds um yeah they just play tag pro all day um but ltp you hear that nerds <laughs> uh so so i i think i may have been influenced by like being surrounded by by the opinions of people that come from a higher skill so like those players usually end up in a one or two seed as opposed to the three and four and knocked out so so you know i might have been biased towards making the season more comfortable for teams that perform well in the regular season because i'm surrounded by people and myself i i think i've well my i don't know actually i, I don't know my record so someone's gonna look this up and call me out on it now but uh <laughs> but uh yeah, I my most memorable seasons are the ones where I've done well in, and it it kind of stands out when you're like a really high seeded team that like you 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 were at risk of being eliminated immediately going into playoffs even if you did extremely well like much better than this other team which can seem kind of unfair. I don't know. I'm getting back into the playoff argument again. I should probably just not bring that up again. But <laughs> no, I brought it up. I I just that's just something I heard from a couple of people. They were like kind of questioning. I, I, yeah, I, I, Which, I, heard a, I heard a fair bit about it, that it was a problem, so... I, that makes I sense, know. then. If if people are going to the CRC and they're telling them that they don't like this, then by all means. But it wasn't, like, people weren't, like, making posts, like, there wasn't someone who just, like, randomly made a post in the subreddit, like, this overtime, or this playoff system sucks. Yeah, like, it definitely wasn't, like, a, a very widespread... Uh, but I mean, if you're listening, if, like, CRC's listening to, like, the minority groups who want something then i guess that's also a good thing that they're listening to people so yeah we're listening to someone you know so as long as your ears are open my friend (laughs) we're we're getting our we're not just pulling these uh these things out of our ass believe believe me yeah (laughs) sometimes but speaking of pulling things out of your ass we're gonna finish up here (laughs) <laughs> that's not a good transition <laughs> okay speaking of keeping your ears open uh crc kept their ears open to the sense sensor of bdl here it's gonna briefly go over this uh how many comments are we at now on that thread 170 something 176 176 so i'm gonna TLDR this. I don't know if this is a TLDR written. I don't think so. Um, Jorge is being harassed by players in ranked pugs. Um, led by BDL, it seems like. Things like she doesn't want to join the channel that has like 13 different people in it all talking because that seems kind of pointless, which I do the exact same thing, but whatever, not going to talk about that. And she gets dragged into Mumble channels, people change their names to call her an insta-loss in Ranked Pugs. And they just kind of are dicks to her. She never told them to stop, so they can't get banned for it. And instead we have this. Is that right? I wouldn't say that they can't get banned for it because she didn't tell them to stop. I mean, obviously if she did tell them to stop, it would be a lot more punishable, but... Something that also plays into the to it is that like, while this is harassment, it isn't like there's it, is there's very is there's very different shades of harassment. Like saying, you know, catalyst equals insta loss, isn't as bad as, you know, saying, like, like hang catalyst or like 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 threats or yeah. racist remarks. Like there's. There's a lot of different things that you can do that are a lot worse. For sure. Um, so, I don't know. Uh, the the full... And there, there's there's a lot of different points of view that you have to take account of. And uh, Jorge, Jorge definitely was not like accommodating to them. And I'm not saying that she 
has to be by any means, but she is going into a known hostile environment, and you know, like she, there, it's not entirely unexpected that they would react negatively. So, I'm I'm not. I mean, I feel like I'm victim blaming here, but <laughs> no, for uh, sure, everyone knows that rank pugs is like pretty it's damn a known cancerous toxic environment. Like you, everyone. I, I want to say it happens to almost everyone. Yeah. I don't, like, like oh yeah even I've, the best players I've get, gotten get flamed shit on all the lot. time people get flamed in the rank fucks that's a fact people get flamed and you shouldn't be surprised if it happens um right the but, thing that mm. the thing that made this case in particular different is um it was repeated um from multiple people which it which becomes an issue very quickly as we saw in season 11 with sam where you have all these people you know like one person saying you know, if I, it's just me saying, you know, uh, Fender equals into less, he's what not going to really care. Um, I mean, you ain't lying, but... I mean, he might care a little bit, but if it's, like, me and, like, six of my friends all messaging repeatedly saying it, it becomes an issue pretty quickly. Um, so... Right, that makes that's, sense. That's what elevated the situation to more than just, like, a private warning, I'd say. Um, if they had been saying anything racist or, like, sexist or... I mean, there yep. there were there were there were a lot of ways this could have been a lot worse that would have easily led to a suspension. And this, I, I feel pretty confident in saying this was pretty close to being a suspension. So, um, I would definitely say BDL is on really thin ice here. And, right. Um, if I, you see any other shit coming out, of, anything else coming out of him this season, I, I would not be surprised to see him take a suspension for it. I have another question about this quickly. Um, so BDL is publicly censored, right? Yes, mm-hmm. and the other players got private warnings. Correct. Correct. Okay, so if something if BDL does anything else, pretty much he's banned mm-hmm. for at least a bit. So Probably, the, the yeah. other people do they are they are there like three steps here? Do you have like the warning stage and then the censor stage and then the banning stage? Yeah, pretty. There's steps, but they can be skipped. So I don't really know if you should call them steps. There's okay. like different levels and matter the severity. Of yeah, there's. I was different under the impression that you don't have to follow it in order. You can skip steps. Yeah, exactly. That is correct. Okay, because from the way the post was kind of written about what the other players got, that they got the warnings, it kind of seemed like if they all did they could all just like do something again and they were free to go without punishment because yeah. they would just get a public censor like no if any of the any of the people that got privately warned if and i i want to stress this for for any like anyone that is gonna like now that that post is out there it's like a public warning for everyone like if you do this kind of shit we've warned you <laughs> like it's not okay so uh so yeah, we'd suspend like if you if you were went into ranked pugs right now, Catalyst, and got like four of your team mates to uh to start harassing someone in it, we'd we'd ban the shit out of you. <laughs> so yeah, don't don't uh I don't know. It's don't a, be a dick. Yeah, don't be a dick. It's it's the top but comment that... was actually so true in that thread. That's why know. is it so difficult to n- just not harass and just be nice? Honestly, don't even get it. Someone help me understand, please. Because it's ranked pugs. And that's yeah. such a stupid thing to say that you're going to get flamed when you play ranked pugs. And ranked pugs is like the only pugs left. But, but it didn't used to be that way, right? Like, no, it started not. like a year or two ago. Yeah. Anyone could play. Like new players were welcome. No one commented on them. They just played them. Oh well. Now when new players join, they just void whatever because of that player and they end up getting banned eventually yeah you're seeing it's like there's a difference between like this idealistic like how things should be versus the realistic how things are like yes ranked pugs should be welcoming towards everyone and we should do everything we can to make it welcoming towards everyone but that's not happening we're not gonna run a police state here where we just ban you for saying mean things to other people at the same time and slowly over time it and with the same sort of toxic players keep playing it over and over again, they're gonna change it into something that's not as welcoming towards everyone. And a lot of people will say, "Well, just ban them, get rid of them from the community entirely." That's not entirely fair because it's 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 a very like nuanced thing. Like they're not they're not saying like they're not all being like racist, sexist, and like very like bigoted people or like like hateful people. They're saying like 
like weird like every like you go into a pub like people shit on each other in pubs and then it's insane. i don't know it's always been like this too like it's i don't know if this is just me but i feel like from the very first day i was pubbing on tag bro people are toxic in tag bro it just seems like especially i mean in pubs i mean okay I don't think people are toxic in pub. People might be a little bit, a little bit passive aggressive in pubs. They're no, not. People... I've not. They're not. Play, play, play one game of League. You're gonna get told to kill yourself. Guarantee a hundred percent. Okay, okay. Like right. every single game I play, I get. Why are you boring? Like your your mom's yeah, an idiot okay. for not like. I. It, okay. It, it, <laughs> is much better relative to other games, but you know, relative to your average interactions on mumble with people and like like mumble is so different than like pubs it's so weird i i guess it's because a lot of people in pubs aren't from the mumble community it was like i don't know it's weird yeah. but people are aggressive in tag pro and competitive games in general and i think that's a real reality that people have to accept i mean you should do if you're a positive person and you're a good person you should do what you can to make things better for everyone by being a nice person um but the reality is some people don't have that disposition and we're not going to, as a CRC, we're not going to ban you for being abrasive or rude sometimes, you know? Um, if it's consistent and it's like bigoted and and, her, and it's like repeated harassment, we will step in. But, you know, we're not here to monitor your behavior. We're not, we're not babysitters. Just before I ended off, I just read something that I have to comment on is that the post quoted the rule page of Ranked Pugs <laughs> staying staying one bumble channel you've got to be surely someone proofread that before they put it out yeah no we, we're definitely aware is that a meme the, that <laughs> you're definitely aware of the rules page for ranked bugs okay um, you know you, you you really need to go on further in that i just wanted to yeah, no, we, yeah. We, we understand. okay <laughs> catalyst fender you got anything to say any final words about the ranked pug fiasco I'm not a big fan. No. Alrighty. Well, I think that'll do her for this episode. Uh, Dstar, you got any last words for the viewers out there? No. Um, just thanks for having me on and getting to sort of represent the CRC in this episode. Yeah. Thank you very much People for joining. Don't call for my head on a spike or anything. Hmm. I'm sure you're good. This is a safe uh, space here. Nice. We, we ain't go over predictions. Ooh, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. We're gonna do. Uh, shit, I forgot. We're gonna do. Um, we'll go over last week, in the next week's episode, and we'll do predictions then, because there is a break for the Easter long weekend. In MLTP. With a hype Easter event coming up. Ooh, wait, there's an Easter event coming up. Yeah, didn't the dev say that was the of next? Uh, the next event. Fun. Are they gonna? Is it gonna be the egg shooting thing? That I thing is so, so cool. Better me. Anyways, Catalyst, you got anything to say to the viewers? Nah, thanks for having me. No worries. Thanks for the thanks for helping us out last minute here. Real lifesaver. Being stuck with D Star alone. Oh. <laughs> Would have been grim. Yeah, I don't know how the CRC does it. Yeah. <laughs> Mad lads, that's all I gotta say. Alright, Fender. Uh you got anything to say, buddy? I think that's it. Yeah, your B team just got uh, swept. Yep. Bad captain. Anyways, thank you all for watching. Uh, Huge see you. Thanks out to Cat and D Star. Yeah, thank you again. Multiple thank yous. Thank you, thank you, thank you Big for joining us. Cat for hopping on last like last minute. Yeah, literally five minutes before we started. <laughs> I'll be awaiting my check. Yeah, you'll be uh, you'll be waiting a while. <laughs> I got about four dollars and fifty cents Canadian in my PayPal right now, so maybe just link me your PayPal, I'll split that with you. <laughs> Anyways, that is that. Thank you for watching and uh we'll see you all next week, same time, same place. Woohoo!